The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. What is faith? Is faith a choice? Which comes first, faith or regeneration? And why is mental assent thought of as a bad term to some? What is the free grace position on all of this? We're going to talk about it coming up next. So glad that you've joined us today on Grace in Focus, the radio and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. We also welcome you to our website, faithalone.org. There are tons of articles and blogs and videos and other free grace resources for you there. That's faithalone.org. Now with today's discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. Bob has a question from a country in Africa. Yes, Jordan, who's a missionary in Uganda, says, I've been listening to the latest videos from the 2023 GES annual conference, and I heard them talking about faith and asking questions about it. I heard it answered that faith is intellectual assent and that faith is even a passive persuasion. Is this the position of GES? If it is simply a passive persuasion and our will is not involved at all, is this not extremely close to the Calvinistic system where the sinner is persuaded by forces outside of himself? Under this understanding of faith, why do some believe and others don't believe? Why are some persuaded and others are not persuaded? To me, it seems like this position of faith essentially makes man the victim of outside forces. So what do you think, Ken? Well, it seems like, Jordan, I'm a little uh, unclear about what he means about the Calvinist definition of faith. How did he word it again? He says it seems like it's the Calvinist system where the sinner is persuaded by forces outside of himself. That's not exactly what Calvinism no, teaches. That's Cal- what we teach. Right. But what Calvinism teaches is faith is the gift of God. That, it's given to you. Right. And so you don't believe God believes for you. Right. You're not persuaded of anything uh, in the Calvinist system. It's well, just given to you. And in Calvinism, regeneration precedes, at least logically, logically. precedes faith. So first you're born again then you believe, then you get the gift of faith. And according to what we're saying, no, faith precedes regeneration, at least logically. You must believe in order to be born again, and that's clear in Scripture. But we're saying that faith itself is not a choice. Right, it's not a choice. And he talks about, he uses the phrase mental assent. Right. Which... Yeah, I guess we have to talk about what do you mean by that? If you, if by mental assent you mean I'm convinced that something is true, then yes. That, that is, is, mental assent is, assent is agreement. Right. And so mental assent would be agreeing that something is true or being persuaded that something is true. Right. Now, people use this almost like it's a cuss word. It's like a it's negative. But really, if mental assent simply means you're convinced, you're persuaded, then there's nothing negative about this. Right. And the reason it's pejorative or seen in a negative way is people say, well, there's emotion is taken out of it completely. You know, like, okay, I hear the gospel. Okay, I believe it. Great. Oh, you know, now I have eternal life. And so, but I have no feeling about yeah, that. Yeah. And, and, and they will say that. They'll say that can't be, you know, because if you, if you really believe you're going to have some, you know, an emotional experience or something like that. And so this phrase is seen in a very negative light. But I would say, first of all, how do you measure? that you know how do you measure well how much emotional high did you get when when you were convinced that you now had eternal life in christ that's right and the other problem is if you abide if you take a non-persuasion view of faith a non-intellectual assent view of faith then what you end up with is the typical three-stage approach, which is understanding, acceptance, and trust. And trust is, uh, one preacher I know of says, it's understanding the claims of Christ, uh, accepting the claims of Christ, and then committing to the claims of Christ. Right. And basically what he says is that this is uh, an emotional component, a willful component, and an intellectual component. Well, the intellectual is the accepting, and the emotional is what? It's usually said, what, intellectual, emotion, 
and will. Yeah. So the emotional and will part is, I think many of them would say, emotion is that I I feel a sorrow for my sin, for example. Yeah. And then I will myself to follow Christ. There's but the some will, kind of they commandment. say, is the trust part or the commitment part. I'm tr- but is the understanding, the emotional part, and the acceptance now is the intellectual part? I think that's what they do. I don't see why understanding is particularly emotional, but they're going to say this. But in any regard, this is kind of a forced thing. We don't see it in the Bible. In the Bible, we see that believing is believing. That's why it's translated believing. Right. So, for example, if you believe Jesus is born in Bethlehem, you are convinced he was born in Bethlehem. If you believe Jesus rose from the dead, you're convinced he rose from the dead. It has nothing to do with some sort of emotional component or some sort of willful component. You don't choose to believe Jesus rose from the dead. The evidence convinces you. Exactly. You know, and and that carries itself over in so many areas of life. You know, do I believe Joe Biden is the president? Yeah, but I don't believe that because I choose to believe it. Right. I believe it because the evidence is compelling. Sure. Or even if, do I believe Dwight Eisenhower was the president when I was born? Right. Yeah, I, I do. You know, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> and there's, there's no emotional or will there. It's just like you said, whatever evidence has been thrown my way in the history books or whatever, or what my parents told me. I believe it. I accept that to be true. Right. And if you want to call that mental assent, yeah, that's what it is. I'm, I mean, I'm convinced that it's true. Now, another part of the the question that Jordan was talking about is, don't how does he word it about the willing to believe? Or yeah, well, he also says. Under this understanding, why do some believe and why don't others? Yes. Why are some persuaded and not others? To him, it seems like we make man the victim of outside forces. My answer would be absolutely not. Um, God is drawing all. The Holy Spirit is convicting all. All are capable of responding. Jesus said to some legalistic Jews, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. They were thinking if they kept the commandments well enough, they would have everlasting life. And he says, but these are they which testify of me, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. Notice there's a willingness to come to Jesus. And I think that's a good thing to discuss here. Yeah. Why would a person not be willing to consider the evidence? Why would a person, even when confronted with the evidence, be unwilling to believe. Okay, so let's say you grew up in a Muslim home. Exactly. And all of your family members are Muslim, and all the people in your country are Muslim. In order to get ahead in life and have a good job, you need to be Muslim. And if you were to say you were a Christian, you would be ostracized from your family, they'd have a funeral for you, they might even kill you. Exactly. There'd be a lot of pressure to not even talk to Christians, to not even read the Bible. Right? Right. To not listen to Christian podcasts or whatever. And the same thing would be true. Let's say you grew up in a Mormon family. Well, you're probably not going to be listening to our podcast. (laughs) Right? Because. And if you do, you have your cultural background, you have many things that come into play. My parents can't be wrong. My imam can't be wrong. My preacher at the Mormon church can't be wrong. Right. And so I'm, yeah, even you're, if, you aren't even open to the truth. Exactly. You're just saying, look, this is the way it is, and I'm not open. And there's lots of people like that. And, and that can be true in, in various denominations. You don't have to be in a cult. Let's say you're in a denomination that believes eternal security is a terrible thing. Well, then you're not going to believe that by faith in Jesus... You have everlasting life that can never be lost. Even if someone perhaps shows you in the scriptures, John 4, for example, you'll never thirst, you might very well come to that and go, no, that can't be what it's saying. I'm unwilling. I just don't understand. I don't understand what it means. You're not accurately teaching me this or something because it can't be true. I get emails from people like that all the time. Sure. And they say we're preaching heresy when we say that if you believe in Jesus, you have everlasting life that can never be lost. You're secure forever. They say that's heresy. And isn't it also true that we're like this in any area of life? For example, there are things 
that I am unwilling to believe. For example, I don't believe in evolution. Right. Someone could come and say, well, look at these bones here or look, look at right. this. And I'm unwilling to believe that. Now, maybe right. 10 years from now I would, but right now I'm unwilling to believe that. Right. You can, people, whoever's talking to me, I'm going to say, well, he's distorting the evidence. I don't believe that or, or whatever the case may be. Same thing for sports. If I believe in a particular sports team and it is better than others, you could say, well, the Detroit Lions are better. They won this many. You know, no, I'm unwilling to believe that. I, yeah. I'm not willing to listen to what you're having to say. Yeah, it seems to me we can be people who are not open. Right. And yet the scriptures call us to be open. For example, Paul said in Acts 17, 27, God has granted to the Gentiles that might grope after God and find him. And he's not far from all of us. And the idea is, if we're open, we will seek. So I would say to you, Jordan, faith is passive. And when you talk to the people in Uganda, share with them the message of everlasting life. You've been over in the continent of Africa. Zambia and Kenya, right. Yeah, and don't you find a lot that eternal security is rejected by most people? Yes, I will find, especially at first, that people are unwilling to listen to that, that message. Even now, pastors you're oh, talking absolutely. to. absolutely. That's mainly who I speak to. And they are unwilling because it'll cost them their jobs. It's what they grew up in, their culture, whatever the case may be. Now, I will say, later... Many of them are willing to look at the evidence. And the reason is, if you begin to throw out some things that make them think about it, right. they that start to become willing. And more they, open. Right. And then maybe they pray about it. Sure. And eventually they come around. But there's going to be a lot of pressure in Uganda to reject eternal security. Right. So what Jordan needs to know is, he shares the message of the free gift of everlasting life and leaves the results to God. He can't force people to believe it. And he can't force them to be open to it. He can't force them to be willing to look at the evidence. Right. right. And he can tell them, if you're open, pray about it and read the Gospel of John and just ask God, is it really this simple? And if they do that, then they will eventually come to faith in Christ because God's a rewarder of those who diligently seek They him. will be convinced that it is true. And they'll be <laughs> persuaded. Amen and amen. amen. And remember when you do that, Jordan, and for all our listeners, keep, keep grace, grace in focus. Would you like to deepen your understanding of Scripture and the Christian life? Well, a great place to start is our website, it's faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We would like to thank all of our financial partners who help us keep this show going. All gifts are tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can be a financial partner, visit us at faithalone.org. We are so happy when we hear from listeners. Maybe you've got a question or comment or feedback. If so, please send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode, Keeping the Theme of Faith, what does it mean to have great faith? We will talk about it next time. And until then, let's keep grace in focus. The preceding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.